my name is Terry Flannery, and I worked at St. Vincent's for 12 years, and it was probably the best days of my life being with those beautiful babies. Years ago, there used to be a big stoop right out in front of Sister Mary Alice's office, and back then, people would drop their babies in baskets on that little stoop, and one of the nuns would go out and get the babies. Of course, that has probably ended many years ago because things have changed so much. And also, if you knew Sister Mary Alice, she would be in her office, and if things were not going well with her babies, she would yell down the hall. And when Sister Mary Alice yelled down the hall, you heard the whole building shake. <laughs> and everybody would be just wondering what was going on. Just for instance, I remember one time I was assigned to traffic court and I couldn't go, you know, I had to go to Sister Mary Alice. Well, she got on her phone and I'm sure they heard her in City Hall because she screamed so much at this whoever was handling it at City Hall. And she, she just yelled at them and she says, I can't be giving my girls to, to you people. There's a lot to be done here. So anyhow, that was Sister Mary Alice. Also on ground floor is where we, where the police came in and received all those babies that were left, like the foundlings or any baby that was left outside. The police brought them in there and then they were taken to different areas depending on their age. Also there um, was the milk lab. And of course, all of our babies were hand fed and all the babies that were not necessarily on the same formula. There was a place where babies were brought and they were brought from the outside and they were in the first area right as you come in the door and there was a big glass window there and many, many people coming home from work or any other place would just come in and look in the window and laugh and carry on with those babies. And most of the babies were not over six months old or something, you know. But the babies enjoyed them and people coming in and sometimes just getting off the buses and looking in that window. I'm Rita Katner. I was, I came back to say, work at St. Vincent's in 1965. And when I came back, sister, I was made night supervisor. As night supervisor, though, I was oftentimes, I got to admit babies that were brought in by the police. Uh, <clears throat> but in our day, well, the police would bring them in, and they'd stay for a while, and then um, we would have bring the babies to a floor. On the second floor, uh, we had uh, one area of the second floor was where young mothers were during their maternity time. They lived on the second floor and the third floor. Uh, my job as a night supervisor was to work with the girls when they would go into labor until they were ready to go to the hospital to deliver. It was always exciting, but one time during the 1967 snowstorm, I had two mothers, actually three mothers that went into labor and each girl, when they would go into labor and go to the hospital, they brought a friend of theirs, one of the other girls that they lived with. So I had six pregnant women going to the hospital. I also had two very sick babies that had to go to the hospital as well. So when the police came, picked them up, they were a little nervous <clears throat> because they were like, why are you sending all these people? I said, because these girls are in labor and they're due to have their baby, so we had to go, and these babies are sick. So we had to get a couple paddy wagons. I couldn't get any cabs to come to take the girls. Part of my thing was to work with the girls that were pregnant. We also had on that floor, uh, we had a clinic there where the girls would see the doctors on a regular basis, and we also had a little pharmacy there. So part of my job at night, if babies were sick, was fill the pharmaceutical medicines for them. Uh, we had on this floor, the girls had a little snack yet, which is where they basically hung out all the time. And on that floor, we also had a large kitchen where all the food was made for 
the babies and for the mothers and the students. On this uh, second floor, the sisters lived there. So the girls were on one end of that floor, and then the other end was the third floor. On the other end of that floor was where the sisters lived, and maternity room on the other side. And the sisters had, uh, again, were right underneath the students' snack bar. So it was not an easy area. And the students were the the child, child, child care technicians. Oh yeah, we had a one-year child care technician program. And they would live in for the year. And uh, their rooms were on fourth floor. Uh, fourth floor, and uh, they had the whole floor. Plus they had the little snack at. And again, right below them were the nuns. So it was not a fun time. Because I spent a lot of time up and down the steps. Um, while I was working at St. Vincent's, I went back to school. And Sister DePaul, who was uh, my boss, uh, kept pushing me to go back to school. And uh, so while I was working there, I was also going to school full time to become a nurse. When I, they asked me to come back to work at St. Vincent's, so I oftentimes worked up on our, we had an infirmary on the seventh floor. And um, so I, worked, I filled in up there. I also, part of my job was to teach the students clinical how to take care of kids and about illnesses and stuff. When, when the babies came in at night, it was um, it was really kind of a nice, I, I think, we had, as Terry talked about earlier, <clears throat> we would bring the babies in and talk to the police, <laughs> and then the babies would go down and be checked out. And um, if they were older, they would move to the fourth floor. So those would be the toddlers. And on that floor, they had to go in a little room. They were always isolated when they came in because you don't know what they're coming in with. So the poor little things, they'd be so scared up there. So I spent a lot of time with them when they first came in during the night because, you know. But I remember one night I got three little kids and the police liked to bring them there. We only kept them until they were three years old. Police would say, oh, they're three years old, but you knew the kid was closer to four, if not the little better. But they didn't want to take them elsewhere. They wanted to bring them to us. I really had to spend a lot of time with them. That's, that was kind of my thing, you know. Were you the last one out of the building when St. Vincent's closed? When we, we got into where we had to close in 1972, in the very end, the building was empty. I was by myself. And um, I took a tour of the place, walking through, crying. And then I had to leave and lock the door behind me. So it was, a, it was a sad day for me. My name is Helen Burke and I had the privilege of working at St. Vincent's from 1966 until closing in 1972. When the first year of being at St. Vincent's, we were students and we worked in all aspects. We, all ages of babies, and we worked in the formula lab. We worked in the clinic with the birth mothers, and we got to know them a little bit then. And when I was there, two of the birth mothers asked me to be godmother for their baby, which I was privileged to be able to do. Uh, and all the babies, were baptized at St. Vincent's. We had our own beautiful chapel and we had a beautiful baptismal font. And if you were free and it was baptismal day, a notice would go out that they needed godmothers for the babies and you could go and get a baby and be godmother for that baby. Many, many times I did that because I loved having the babies by myself, just one little baby to hold, and they were young babies, and that was my my love. I love them. I like to watch them move, and like to <laughs> just whatever they did was wonderful. So after um, after the year at St. Vincent's, I was fortunate enough to be able to get a job on the fifth floor, which was a unit where. 
babies came from the newborn nursery and they were that newborn nursery was like from birth to six weeks and then they were transferred to the floor that I got a job on and I worked there for the rest of the time the other privilege or the other thing that was so much fun to do was if a baby had a, an appointment with a doctor you got to get a baby dressed up and we get a cab and we go to the doctor and you felt like that baby was your own and you just got them all by themselves and to take care of them. One funny story <laughs> is we had a little guy who, who was just beautiful and he had club feet and before they went to the doctor we used to take their cast off. Well in order to get the cast off they had to be soaked. It took a long time to get the cast off of those babies' feet. So I had one little guy that was in his, well, this little guy that was sitting in the, in the sink in his water as we were trying to get the cast off. And he kind of tooted and he saw the bubbles coming out. <laughs> he just, he was hysterical. And there's so many fun stories about those babies. I just, I, I if it was open today, I'd still be there changing babies and feeding them. Hi, my name is Maureen Roach and I began my studies at St. Vincent's in 1966 and till 67 and then I came back as um, the charge nurse for the second shift on 5 South. At that age group varied from 6 months to about 18 months. Each um, section had different age children which required different um, care. Uh, also there were several students that would help take care of them at that time. Um, there was so, mu so much going on because you were their mothers. You helped take care of them. You made sure that they were fed and that they were dressed and that they were played with and the best part about it was getting down on the floor and actually playing with them. But you also had to do the cleanup. Playing with the kids is definitely a big one. And being able to take them out on field trips. Um, we would take them out in wagons and um, we'd always turn heads when we uh, went for our walk with them. And sometimes we just took a child, it'd be another student taking her favorite baby out. Um, and you know, we'd go up to Michigan Avenue or someplace local, but it was an outing, it was a field trip for them, and um, they, uh, they enjoyed it. We also had a porch or a playground at the end of the fifth floor, and um, which is now called the sixth floor, which gets us <laughs> all confused, but um, and with the swing set, and the kids could go out there and play. On ground floor, they, they had the um, this, the hose and they were able to do other, you know, outdoor activities and um, play in the water. Things that toddlers do at that time. Um, it was a wonderful experience working at St. Vincent's. When the children were at St. Vincent's, they were loved. And I think that is the important message that we would like to get out. That even though it's been more than 50 years, I still remember my favorite baby's names. There was Maria and Casey and um, Nora, and some of them I remember their birthdays. And a lot of the, the other students that I would run into, they remember their, I mean, we talk about it like it was yesterday, you know, and it's 50 plus years. So, but it was, it was definitely a memor memorable experience, and uh, I am so glad that I got to be part of it. typical shift when we would come in at 8 30 9 o'clock whatever time we started in the morning then we would have a check out to see what the night shift did and if everything was okay on the night shift and then we would be appointed to whatever unit we were going to work in and then we would do all of our bathing of our babies 
and then after the bathing, then we would have their 10 o'clock feeding. That's what we did on Five North. Their, their routine was a little bit different because most of those kids were between 18 months and three years, so their, their routine was different. When they got up in the morning, they would get dressed and have breakfast, and they had little dining rooms, and they all sat around their little tables, and they could feed themselves at that time, you know. And after they ate, they had been dressed, and then they played in the big playroom, and we had a nursery school, which they loved the nursery school. And they, had, they loved the nursery school because everything was toys were so special. It was just a fun time. Part of being a mother is potty training. And so that is something else that we did um, during our time at St. Vincent's. And um, yeah, they they picked it up. I think maybe because there were so many of them that you know one would see another one, and that hey, yeah, let me try this. But they they were they were body trained. It's probably graduation day. I do have a gown on, so it would have been a floor. It was probably ground floor. This is me with a baby on a floor on the floor that I worked on. And this is a picture of my favorite baby. People used to call her little Helen. And this is you can see how we used to dress them. It was fun on holidays we could dress them for for Christmas or Easter. We used to dress them for Easter too. Otherwise because they didn't wear rubber pants or anything, they were pretty much in comfortable clothes that were easy to change. Judge, Judge Joe Wood, when he was there, uh, our friend who he was named after, Mary Jo, that's how he got the name of Joseph, because it was her turn to have a baby name. The baby that I had that was named after me was found at Grant Park, so her name became Rita Grant. And so usually so, it connected to some place where they were found for the last name, you know. Sure. Because they used to, at first they used to come in as John Doe, but sisters started naming them. Then they would go out. I mean, Rita Grant obviously went out. She became something else, you know. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of her too. I'd love to see her someday and give it to her. It's a big one. When um, Judge Joey, when he was there a couple of years ago, our friend Mary Jo was at the reunion, and he was named after Mary Jo, and they got to meet each other, which was a great thing. I mean, for her, she was thrilled, and he was thrilled, because he kept the name of Joseph. I almost think that's like a miracle, that they ran into one another, and I think it was amazing that even Mary Jo, how fast she connected with him. Because she knew from the time he walked in that that was the one, that was her Jo, you know. The babies that I took care of on the fifth floor are now 53, 54 years old. And you hope that they're all doing well and that they have a good life and are happy. And I, do, I just, it's just, I wish that when they came back for this, we would know who they were as infants. Mm -hmm. But I know that that's or even toddlers or toddlers yeah. to mm -hmm. know. Right. Because you can't you remember them as babies, but you don't know them. Yeah. We look at pictures. They are. We look at pictures now, and right. right away can say their name, you know, and say, "Oh yeah, this was on such and such floor." I mean, the memory is very clear, and um, I, yeah, it's hard to believe that they could be that age because we still <laughs> think of them 
as being infants or toddlers. Okay, I just want to say one more thing. My days at St. St. Vincent's were probably the most joyful, happy days of my life. And all of the babies were cared for. They were like our own children. And it was always a pleasure to be with them. Yeah.